Hello, everyone. I'm Bing Yingchen. I'm from Hubei Normal University of China. It's my pleasure to present this paper. This talk is about storing executable malware from packet binary sample, which is the final goal of Windows binary unpacking. To recover an executable malware from packet sample, we have to address a challenge, API obfuscation. For the standard API code, the control flow transfer from the API code side to the target API directly. If the packer use API obfuscation, the control flow will go through a trampoline before reaching the target API code, making unpacking tool hard to resolve API names. API obfuscation has two effects. The first, first effect is anti static analysis. That is, a tool like IDA is unable to recognize API names of the unpacked malware. The second effect is anti dynamic execution. That is, the unpacked malware cannot be executed in a dynamic environment. And thus, its malicious behavior cannot be as observed. To deal with API obfuscation, we conduct an in-depth study to API obfuscation schemes and find five kinds of scheme totally. This finding can be a best night to test the API de-obfuscation approaches. Current API de-obfuscation approaches commonly rely on a number of assumptions. The first assumption is that target API address can be statically identified in the unpacked code. However, this assumption does not hold true. For example, if the packer uses IAT rejection by SEH, it can break this assumption. The second assumption is that when the control flow arrives at a DIL, it necessarily points to the target API's entry point. This assumption does not hold in some cases. For example, if the packer uses anti-debugging routine scheme to obfuscate the API core, when the control flow arrives a DIL, it points to the anti-debugging API rather than the target API. Another two examples are ROP rejection and the Snowden code. These two schemes can also break this assumption. The third assumption is that API calls are necessarily referred to the IAT. This assumption does not hold in the case of rewrite API code site. That is, some packers rewrite the original instruction at the API code site. The indirect call is written to direct call. This direct call does not refer to the IAT. Our approach is called API X-ray, which is shown in this figure. First, the input of our approach is the OEP memory captured by an unpacking tool. Second, the static analysis module searches all possible API code sites in the OEP memory. Third, the API micro execution module enforces the execution at each API code site to identify the target API. Fourth, the target APIs are used to restore an executable malware. The key module of our approach is hardware assisted API micro execution. We will introduce it in the following. Our hardware assisted API micro execution should meet the following two requirements. The first requirement is executing the trampoline code at each API code site. To meet this requirement, we create a new thread for the address of each API code site to execute the trampoline code. We name it as API Micro Execution. This name is inspired by the name of Micro Execution from God Floyd work. The second requirement is that K 
capturing the control flow branch in trampoline so that we can identify the target API. To meet this requirement, we use the hardware branch transit method provided by Intel. The Intel provides three kinds of branch transit methods, including LBR, BTS, and IPT. For LBR, it requires only 16 or 32 branches. For IPT, it does not record all kinds of branches. Therefore, we choose BTS to capture the control flow branch in trampoline. In our evaluation, we compare API X-Ray with three other similar approaches being unpacked SNP15, REP construct. For being unpacked, it does not handle with any of our system. For SNP15 and the REP construct, net dynamic analysis step can defeat IAT redirection and the rewrite API code side. For API X-Ray, it can handle with all kinds of API obfuscation schemes. We also do a large scale evolution and find that the IAT rejection is the most used API obfuscation scheme due to its easy development. We take an unknown malware as a case study. This malware is packed by an unknown packer with two API obfuscation schemes, IAT rejection and anti debugging routine. The rationale the original unpacked code has no API information, and the detection number of where total is only two. After the API X-ray recovers the 163 APIs, the detection number is up to 133. This evaluation shows that API X-ray improves the detection rate of unknown malware. We discuss possible attacks to API X-ray once it's public. These possible attacks include a test to BTS, a test to NS byte, statically linked library, stolen code, and argument sensitive trampoline. The countermeasures to these attacks are shown in our paper. We also discuss the limitations of our approach. API X-ray falls in the following two cases. The first case is custom DLs. API X-Ray cannot install important tables from custom DLs, which are absent in our testing environment. The second case is OEP obfuscation. Some unpacked P files with complete important tables crashed at runtime due to the OEP obfuscation. We leave it as a future work. Another interesting question is that can API X-Ray be applied to Linux malware? At present, Linux Packer does not apply any API obfuscation scheme. In the future, if Linux Packer apply API obfuscation scheme to hide their API calls, API X-Ray's technical can be applied to Linux malware as well. That's because API X-Ray is designed to work on Intel CPU which is independent of OS. Thanks for your time.